because sure. let's take it through. So you see Fight Night, biggest three, back on June twentieth. It, over there in the Apex Center. I mean, the Tuesday before that, you're not even on the UFC roster. You're you're sure. kind of living, kind of you're you're pretty much broke at that point. And then I've been broke just, for a long time. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then this is all just a, a, a dream that you've had forever. And then you you get the call from a manager uh, was like you weren't even kind of like you kind of just brushed it off, right? Not to get your hopes up. And and then you get there. So like. And There's that, even more to the story if you want to hear it. I, I can get, I can tell you the please, whole story if you want to know. Please. Okay, so it's it's kind of a long story, but I'll try to keep it as quick as I can. <laughs> Sunday night, my manager calls me and he asks how my weight is. I said it's good. He's like, well, there's an opening this weekend, and I've heard this ten times, maybe fifteen times. I'm like, all right. He's like, no, this this I think he says I think this is going to be the one. I don't remember if it was Jason or if it was Jacob or which I have an incredible management team, Iridium Sports, the best management team in the world. Shout and I, I can't remember which one hit me up. And I mean, yeah, shout out to Iridium Sports and just shout out to Jason House. Uh, but they, they thought that this could have been the call. And I was like, all right, let's go. So I show up to the gym Monday, fucking ready to go. And uh, I, I, I'm drilling at 9 a.m. and I'm fucking excited. And then the, my training partner goes, hey, did you hear about Max? Uh, Max Raxkoff. And I was like, no. He's like, ah, oh, he just got signed to the UFC. And I'm like, when? He's like, oh, he's, he just found out today he's going to fight this weekend. Well, that was my spot. And mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, deflated. Like, fucking, what the fuck am I doing? Like, I was, I went into an utter depression. Like, fuck. Again, here we go. Eric, Eric Nixick, a uh, friend, good friend of mine, my boss, the manager at Extreme Couture. He's like, "Hey, stop being a little bitch." I'm like, "Fuck you!" Like, I, I, I was, I was pissed at him because it's like, dude, you don't know what I'm going through emotionally. Like, I live two thousand miles away from my family. Like, look, look, look at this is, this is. Let me see if I can uh, flip okay. this thing around. I don't know if you're I. You're from Michigan, and right now you're in Vegas, so that's Correct. quite the distance. Yeah, only a couple times. Two right thousand miles, and mind you, this, this is my life. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. flip around. This is where I live. Cool. This is everything I have. That's the front door. There's my TV. There's my fridge. Like I lit. This is my whole living area. I well, live in a studio. It, it looks like everything. You got your bed. You got your Xbox. Yeah, you got exactly. your TV. You got your fridge. Well, you know, when you're 31 years old, you know, a graduate, you know, I'd like to have a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? But either way, so I, I'm in this mild state of depression. Wednesday rolls around. Jason's like, "Hey, I think there's another opening. I'll let you know." And I was like, "All right." I don't hear from him for almost 24 hours. So I was like, I must have got filled. I'm going out to get dinner Wednesday night. And then he calls. He's like, can you make weight Saturday? And he's asked me this before. But the difference with this time is he usually texts me. And this time he called me. So I had a, I had a weird feeling. And then he's like, all right, congratulations. You're fighting Saturday. This is Wednesday night, about 9 p.m. And I just remember saying, okay, sounds good. And I was with my girlfriend. And mm-hmm. she's like, who is that? I was like, oh, it's Jason. She goes, what do you want? He goes, well, I guess I'm fighting this weekend. She's like, who and where? I'm like at the apex UFC and she's like, Oh my God, starts crying. And, and I kind of just sit there like I'm sitting right now because I didn't really, I, I was waiting for him to call me back and saying, no, it's not real. <laughs> and uh, then I, the next day I checked my weight. I was 170 pounds and was like, fuck, I lose 15 pounds overnight. <laughs> That's fine. I'll start at noon and I can do it all. Well, when I woke up the next morning, Jason had an itinerary for me for the whole day to get all my medicals done. So from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m., I was going to different – I had to do like four different doctor's appointments. Mm. Oh, that was a fucking mess. So finally about 5 p.m. rolls around, and I'm exhausted from driving all over town, and I have weigh-ins in, 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 in 15 hours. So I was like, fuck it. I call my coach, Roman Dennis. We go to the gym. I go walk into my gym. Frank Camacho is in the cage. I'm like, what the fuck? Like – I don't want to see it. I don't, you know, I, and I'm intimidated. And that's his opponent, by the way. That's your opponent. That's yeah, yeah, my opponent. That's the opponent that I just found out that I'm fighting. <laughs> and I'm a Frank Camacho fan. Like oh, this shit. guy, he has, he has, a, he, has a, he has like eight fights in the UFC. He has like five performance bonuses. This guy is a slugger. I've never <laughs> met him before, but mm-hmm. you watch him fight win or lose. He comes in and he's trying to knock everybody out. I'm like, Holy fuck. Like I'm fighting this guy in the UFC and I got to make weight. What, what the fuck is happening? So I sit at the gym till six o'clock to nine o'clock because I didn't want to train in front of him. I didn't want him to him or his coaches to see anything. I don't want him to mm-hmm. throw me see me throw a jab. Mm-hmm. So nine p.m. rolls around. I put my sauna suit on. We, me and Roman, Roman Isbell, uh, 
him and I start working. I start getting a sweat going. We're at the gym from 9 a.m. or excuse me, 9 p.m. till 2 or 3 a.m. I can't remember. I step on the scale. I was. He's like, all right, you're still two pounds over. And I'm like, fuck, oh, this fucking sucks. So he's like, I tell you what, weigh-ins are at 9 a.m. Sleep from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. I'll wake you up at 6 and we'll finish this weight cut. I'm like, all right, bet. So he wakes me up at 6 a.m. I put my sauna suit on and it was, it was, you know, it was the summer in Vegas. So it's 90 degrees at 6 a.m. Yep. And I just start walking down the street and I walk all the way to the UFC event center <laughs> down to just fucking, <laughs> fucking walking. I get on, I'm like 0. 0.2 over. I'm like, fuck, get back in the sauna, lose the 0. 0.2, make weight. Frank mm-hmm. misses weight by like three pounds mm-hmm. i'm just like fuck all right let's go and uh i don't care I, i'm not big at three, i don't think three pounds makes or breaks the fight uh and then everything just happens so fast next thing i know i'm waking up usada's waking me up at 7 a.m to drug test me <laughs> next thing i know james you got to be here at this time and i and I, at, at this point i don't even everything's happening so fast that i can't keep up it's just going and i'm just reacting and then i get in the cage and uh Bruce Buffer starts calling my name and he calls me the guitar hero. And I'm just like, I just remember trying to keep my nerves cool. And I'm just like, and there's actually a really cool point in the video. It's very cool for me. At least there's a point there's, there's a couple key points in the video. If you ever get to see the whole thing, when Bruce starts calling my name, I'm looking across at Frank and he's pacing back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then Bruce starts announcing my name and he's pointing at me and he's pointing his name card at me and he's, and he's getting closer and I remember sh- just doing this, like shaking my head. I remember, I remember it really well because I remember thinking to myself, like, "Yes, I'm supposed to be here. I've worked so hard. This is the, this is my moment." I'm and, and you just see me doing this, and I'm and it's just like, "Fuck, I did it, man!" And this is this is my spot. And uh, like I said, in the in the in the best part about the video is, is you can see me shaking my head at him. Mm-hmm. And that's the exact moment when I realized that I did it and made it. Uh, And then there's another video I shared a couple, like last week on my Mm -hmm. Instagram that when Herb puts his right arm around me and spins me around, I spin and I'm, and I'm looking away. And then just the look in my face, it's like at that exact moment, I realized that my life has changed forever, (laughs) no matter what happens the rest of it. And it's, and you just, you can't catch these things on tape. Mm -hmm. Like, the like uh, to, to to think if i pause the video at this exact moment all the endorphins in my brain are being released right now to and i and i'm realizing i'm just about to comprehend my life is being changed at this exact second and that's that's all i gotta say about that man that's I, fucking I, that's i can't even I, imagine what that feels like i mean you're speaking about everything flying by and then so with the fight i mean you TKO him on his feet 41 seconds into the round. I, yeah. I mean, that was the, seconds, the second quickest finish in a debut in UFC history right there. Correct. And you didn't even have a week to prepare. You're cutting 15 pounds in only a couple days. And then I think one of the coolest parts is besides that brutal TKO because, damn, son, uh, you, <laughs> you had a messed up. That's off to Frank. He stayed on his feet the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you couldn't even knock him down. Jeez what's your problem but um yeah <laughs> and then i think one of the coolest moments of this i've watched that video that fight replay tons of times like the stuff i i shared on our twitter and instagram when i was able to announce that that we got this scheduled i mean it, it that that yell that you that you had after uh, you know her pulled you away it, it man i it just goosebumps every single time and you cannot write something cooler than this you can't it's it's the way the thing the way i look at it and the, the only thing i can compare it to is being a second string quarterback in the super bowl and throwing the game winning touchdown in the final second of the game that's the only thing i can compare it to there's nothing or hitting a home run the count is full and you and you're you got fucking pulled off the bench And you have to do something for your team to win and you hit a home run. These are the only things. And that's the thing about sports, about all sports is very rarely you hear stories like when, I mean, when you were young, how how old are you? I'm 21. (laughs) 21. So, but when you were probably six, seven, eight years old, you're playing backyard football and you were probably Randy Moss or 
whatever, mm-hmm. Brett Favre throwing, you know, I'm Brett Favre, throw the winning touchdown. Woo, everyone celebrates. That's fiction. Mm-hmm. But you're trying to simulate that moment of being that person in that moment. I was that guy, and I got to be in that moment. And not everybody in sports do. Even there's there's thousands of fighters that come through. There's thousands of football players. I mean, how many football players can say they want they caught the game winning pass or the game winning you know touchdown or the game winning home run or the game running ribby? It's like that's and that that's what it was for me. Right. And the UFC is the biggest platform for mm-hmm. fighting, so that I can compare it to the NFL. I can compare it to the MLB. It's 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 unreal. Well, you pretty much achieved what point zero 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 maybe a few other zeros population will ever accomplish. It's yes, sir. It, it truly is remarkable, and that's why I'm. That's still one of my favorite UFC like moments. Honestly, uh, that's probably easily top five for me. Easily, I appreciate that. I genuinely appreciate that because I'm not saying that my road's harder than anybody. I'm not here for a pity party. Mm-hmm. All fighters face adversity. I have faced my fair share. A lot of guys do. So I guess some don't, but a lot of guys do. And uh, you know what, what, what? However anybody thinks about it, I, I know what I did. I know how, how hard I worked to get to where I am. It's not like I just casually I, – I, I don't – you know, like <laughs> – I, I, I'm college educated. I have a college degree. I could go make a hundred grand a year sitting behind a desk, but I risked it all for this dream over 10 years ago. I started in 2007. It took me 13 years to get to the UFC. Now I'm here. I'm going to make my name known.